Today on Mr. Tessalonian, I'm going to show you a design that I came up with using Tinkercad so that we could 3D print all the parts we're going to need to make a working water ram pump. What you see here in front of you is the completed model. In the background there you see all the individual pieces that you're going to need to print out to make the water ram pump actually function. So let's go ahead real quickly here. I'll go over the entire pump, show you all the working pieces, kind of describe to you how a water ram pump works. Then we're going to send this over to the Creality K1C and we're going to print out all these parts after it's done printing, we'll assemble the entire water ram, bring it outside, hook it up to one of our water sources that we use for a hydroelectric shed, and we're going to give this water ram pump that we 3D printed a good test just to see how well it works. Look quickly here, let's go ahead and just go around the pump so you can see the whole thing completed. You can see the pneumatic trap tank up here that acts like the pneumatic spring to push the water uphill. You can see we've got the two one-way valves. We've got one right here, and then we've got one right there that we're going to 3D print both the case and the flapper for. The input pipe that's going to bring the water into our system. We've got our output pipe right here. That's basically all the pieces that really matter in a water ram. You just got your two one-way valves. You got an output, an input, and then you have your pneumatic trap tank that's going to use water coming into the system to compress air in the top of this tank and then once the one-way valve shuts that compressed air acts like a spring and then pushes that water and gets trapped up inside of this tank back out through your output pipe. As long as you have about three foot of head coming into the water ram you can typically get about nine to twelve to maybe even fifteen foot of output height from the output itself so many many times higher output than the actual input. Now let's go ahead and disassemble it a little bit so you can see how they all stack together. First of all, we'll take off the compression tube that goes up on top of the compression tank. We'll pull that off to the side. It's just basically a tank that has one way in and one way out. And you just flip it upside down so the opening to the tank's at the bottom. We have a coupling ring right here that'll hold that to our T that's right here. We've got an output piece right there that goes up to a half inch poly pipe. We've got just a simple T for the water to go through on its way up into the tank and then back out through the output. Here we have the one-way valve system. Let's go pull that off as one piece here. Take a better look inside of this. So let's go ahead and zoom in on the one-way valve. This has got a couple pieces in it. We've got a top cap piece that goes over it. And this allows us to get down into where the valve is, which is right here. We can actually stick the flapper down in there once we 3D print it. And this will make it a lot easier to assemble. You can see the one-way flapper valve right here. Very simple little piece that goes in there. We'll go ahead and remove that out of there. You can see the cutout in there for the flapper valve to sit down into. And it's just got a little pin hole over here to the side that allows you to stick a pin through there. And that'll allow you to keep the flapper valve into place. Very simple design. So once again, let's go ahead and just go back. We'll put the flapper valve back in there. And then we'll put the top of it back on there. And then this is all you have right there is a full one-way valve ready to go. So there you go, there's that piece. Let's go ahead and move that off to the background a little bit. We've got an input piece right here that's got a three-quarter inch poly pipe hook up to it. We've got a coupler to connect that to our main pipe there. We've got over here another one-way valve. And this one, let's go ahead and zoom in on all this. This one right here drops down to open and then closes coming back up. So you can see the valve is actually closed right now. We can pull that off of there real quick just to give you an idea of what it looks like. There you go. And then we just have a collar that slides up over the one-way valve and then connects that to this pipe section. So here's all the pieces. You've got your main pipe section. You've got a collar here that's going to connect that directly to your output one-way valve. You can see the flapper right here. Let me go ahead and show you what we've got going on in this flapper valve. It's a little different than the other one. A little spike is going to keep this valve from coming all the way down and opening all the way up. That'll make it too hard for the water to get behind it and actually shut it again. So by adding this little spike to it right here, we can keep that valve kind of at an angle when it falls down. And that'll allow the water to grab it as the water starts to come back up through that opening and close that valve for us. Just a little bit of extras to these things can really make them work a lot better. So pretty simple design. We just have a bunch of pieces that we're going to have to print out. Let's go ahead and go back real quick, put that whole thing back together. So there you go. We've now got our completed water ram. We'll zoom back out on the whole thing here. So pretty simple. Just took a while to actually design all the individual pieces. 
We're now going to go ahead and separate all this out. We'll put this on a flash drive, send this over to the Creality K1C. All right, guys, we're on Creality Slicer. We're going to get ready to slice up all the parts for a 3D printed water ram. Let's go ahead and start out with this piece right here. This is the 3 quarter inch poly pipe attachment. Let's go up to our material. Uh, we definitely don't want PLA on this. Uh, let's go ahead and find Creality PETG. There we go. Let's go down to Strength. Let's switch the outside perimeter loops to three outside walls. We're going to go down to Infill and switch that up to 100% Infill. So there we go. That should be basically everything that we're going to need to do. Let's go ahead and slice the part up and see how long it's going to take. Alright, so we're done slicing. It says it's going to take an hour and 36 minutes. It's only going to use 13.74 grams and the reason it's going to take so long is because of the design and the 100% infill. So let's go ahead and export that to local. We'll go up to save and we'll replace anything that has the same name on there. Alright, so there we go. We've now got our first part ready to go. We're going to send this over to the Creality K1C and get this printed. I'll show you guys all the parts when they're done. Getting ready to start printing our parts out. Let's go down here to the menu. Go to USB drive. Alright, so we've got our three quarter poly pipe attachment. That's what we're going to start with. Let's go ahead and hit print. Alright guys, so there we go. Alright guys, so we've got all of our pieces printed on the Creality K1C for our water ramp pump project. All we got to do now is assemble them, get it ready and bring it out and give it a test. So let's go ahead and get this thing put together. We're going to grab the main tube body for the pump. Let's go ahead and flip that around. We're going to put together one of our one-way valves. We're going to need that piece and this piece right here and one of our little flappers and a pin. Let's go ahead and turn the main valve body over, grab our flapper, and now you're going to want the smoothest side of that flapper down towards the actual seal plate inside your main valve body. So I'm going to go ahead and stick that down in there. Lighting's not real great right now, so you're not going to be able to see a lot down in there, but all we're going to need to do now is go ahead and stick a pin right through both of those and we now have a one-way valve ready to go. This is going to be the output side valve so we've got a top cover for that and we're going to go ahead and add a little super glue right here around this. Let's go ahead and get rid of the little top gel that came off. We'll add a little super glue all the way around. Alright so there we go. A little bit of a seal all the way around that. We'll set that down and we're going to stick the top cover to our one-way valve on top of that. We're going to set that over to the side and let it dry for a second. Let's go ahead and assemble our other one-way valve. So we've got the two pieces right there and we've got the flapper with the little pin on it on this one. Make sure because this one opens down that you have your pin aiming the right direction. So we're going to go ahead and stick that down inside the main valve body, get it aligned. And once again, all we're going to need to do is grab the uh, little pin here stick it through the hole in the back and we now have another one-way valve for our output. Alright, so the next step is, is just go ahead and add a little super glue to this again all the way around. There we go. And we're going to stick the top cover over that just like this and once again we're going to set that to the side and let it dry. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next parts of this and that is going to be to add one of these collars to the main tube here. Before we do that, we're going to put a little bit of super glue all the way around this. Make sure it goes all the way around so you get a good seal on that. We're going to slide that collar down just like that. So now we have our collar over the main tube ready to go. The next part of this is now that we've let that sit for just a moment, hopefully the super glue is set up. We're going to add a little super glue over the top output piece to this main pipe section. Let's go ahead and Add some glue all the way around. And that looks good right there. We're going to go ahead and slide one of our one-way valves down over that tube just like this. Make sure you got it aiming in a direction that you like. Alright, so there we go. It's now ready to go. Alright, so now that we've got that glued on there, let's go ahead to this other output side here. We're going to go ahead and put a bunch of glue around that. Just like this, take our other one-way valve and I'm going to make sure that valve is aiming this direction. We're going to stick that right over the end and we're going to let those two set up and let them dry for a second. I'll be right back once they've set up. So now that we've got those two pieces glued together, I added a clamp to the back of this just to kind of hold it upright for us. Let's go ahead and start gluing the rest of this together. We're going to need our T 
And we're going to glue that T down inside the upper collar right here. So let's go ahead and add some glue to our T real quickly here, all the way around. Make sure you get a good glue line because if this leaks, you're going to have some issues with it. The better seal you get, the better this is going to work. So here we go. All right, that should be plenty of glue all the way around. We're going to want the output going towards you on this, so make sure you get your output direction aiming the right direction. Uh, there we go, just like that. So now we're going to let the super glue on that set up. So the next part of this is that we're going to go ahead and insert the three quarter inch poly pipe piece into the end over here. Now I'm not going to use super glue on this because later on I may want to change the size of the input and that'll be pretty hard if this is all super glued in. I'll end up adding some rubber cement to this here off camera. We'll go ahead and put it in for now, but the rubber cement will be something that I can actually remove later on and change that out. It also gives you a good seal. Uh, the next part of this is the half inch poly pipe attachment. Once again, I'm not going to super glue that on because I may later on want to change that to a different size. So we'll just attach that for now. Later on, I'll add some rubber cement to that. And just like before, that'll allow me to be able to remove it. So the next part of this, we're going to grab our last collar. We're going to go ahead and add some glue inside the collar here. Make sure you add a good layer all the way around evenly. All right, so that looks like plenty of glue. We're going to go ahead and attach that collar right on top of this T right here. All right, so there we go. All right, we've got all that glued together and ready to go. The next part that we're going to need to do is glue our top compression tank on there. And that's going to probably be a little out of the camera shot. Let me see here. Yeah, it's going to be a little out. So let's see if we can get this closer in for you guys so you can see it. And we're going to add some glue around the ring right here. All right. There we go. So now we've got the glue on our top compression tank. We're going to slide that into that collar and now we're just going to let this entire thing dry. Once it's completely set up, I'll add the rubber cement to the output and the input and we'll get this out and get it tested. All right guys, so here we go. We're outside. I've got the water ram hooked up to our water source. I've got a half inch poly pipe coming out of that going up over a ladder and then back down. So once we build up pressure, the water should pour out right next to the water pump. That way we can see that within the camera shot. I've got our input line ready to go. I just got to go turn on the valve. One of the little extras I had to add to it was the spring right here. And I've had to do that to every one of the water rams I've ever built. You had to add a little bit of a spring to the output valve to make it so it opens up a little bit faster. That should work pretty well. Let me go ahead and set up the camera. We'll turn on the water and show you the water ram in action. All right, guys, so we've got the output pipe. We've got the water ram. Let me go turn on the water and let's show you guys just how well this is going to work. Here we go. Oh, look at that. There's water coming out of our output pipe. You can see the output valve opening and shutting. Actually giving us a pretty good stream of water coming out of there. Look at that. Well, that's a successful test of a 3D printed water ram. All right, guys, look how well that's actually working. I'll tell you what, this will sure save a lot of money on building water ram water pumps. Typically, those one-way valves are $50 a piece, if not more, depending on what size you want. So this probably cost me altogether about $7 to build this in just a few hours worth of time. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed. Until next time.